Following the UK riots, a series of court hearings have started to reveal details about the individuals involved in the disturbances. Among those appearing in court was John Honey, a 25-year-old man who confessed to several charges related to looting and vandalism during the riots in Hull on 3 August. Honey pleaded guilty to three counts of burglary, having targeted the Lush store, the O2 shop, and Shoe Zone amidst the turmoil. Furthermore, he admitted to racially aggravated criminal damage after assaulting a BMW with three Romanian men inside, along with vandalizing nine other vehicles at a garage. Prosecutors portrayed a severe image of Honey's involvement, characterizing him as a significant participant in the violence that engulfed Hull. He also faced accusations of pushing a bin toward police lines, escalating the chaos. Honey was scheduled for sentencing in Hull, but the judge postponed the case until Friday, referring to a letter from a prison officer that described Honey as an overconfident individual, showing no remorse for his actions. The court heard that Honey even questioned a probation officer about wanting his autograph. Despite these claims, Honey contests the prison officer's view and plans to argue that he is truly remorseful upon his return to court. In another but related case, a 13-year-old girl faced court after admitting to threatening unlawful violence outside a hotel accommodating asylum seekers in Aldershot, Hampshire. This incident took place on 31 July, when the girl, along with a group, was observed punching and kicking the entrance of the Potter's International Hotel. As a minor, the girl cannot be named and sat with her parents while acknowledging her wrongdoing. She was granted bail and is scheduled to be sentenced at Basingstoke Magistrates Court on 30 September. Thomas Power, a senior Crown prosecutor, criticized the young girl's actions, stating, This shocking incident could have instilled real fear among those targeted by these bullies, and it is particularly upsetting to discover that such a young girl took part in this violent upheaval. Power stressed that widespread public unrest is never acceptable, and the Crown Prosecution Service, CPS, will act promptly and decisively to maintain law and order. The girl's conviction forms part of a wider crackdown on individuals implicated in the national disorder, which flared up following the Southport stabbings. Analysis by the PA News Agency indicated that at least 50 youths under 18 have been charged in connection with the riots. Courts have expedited cases, with sentences reaching up to three years already issued. Notably, Two 12-year-old boys became the youngest individuals sentenced regarding the unrest, with one recorded on camera throwing an object at a police van and vandalizing a vape shop and a bus. The repercussions from the riots have resulted in various sentences being handed down to those participating in violent actions. At Sheffield Crown Court, 19-year-old Drew Jarvis, a father of one, was sentenced to three years in prison after being caught lighting an arrow and throwing it at officers during a riot outside the Holiday Inn Express in Rotherham on 4 August. Jarvis also recognized throwing bricks at police who were safeguarding the hotel where asylum seekers were present. Additional convictions were obtained at Chester Crown Court, where two men were imprisoned for inciting racial hatred online. Christopher Taggart and Reese MacDonald, both from Runcorn, Cheshire, admitted to charges related to their provocative social media posts that called for protests outside a hotel in their locality. McDonald received a sentence of 32 months, while Taggart was given 28 months. The court was informed that McDonald had posted on Facebook, need to march on the Daresbury Hotel with torches and pitchforks, and Taggart followed a few days later with a message stating, we don't want them here. F asterisk 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 M. They started, we will end it. All of this wouldn't have happened if they shut the borders, sick. A knuckle duster was also discovered at Taggart's residence during a police search. As of Monday, the National Police Chiefs Council reported that 975 individuals have been arrested and 546 charged due to the unrest. Nevertheless, the government has recognized that it cannot guarantee some of these individuals won't be released after serving only 40% of their sentences because of a plan aimed at reducing prison overcrowding set to commence in September. Despite the arrests and sentences, the surge of protests and violence, especially from far-right supporters, seems to have decreased for the time being. Concerns about more than 100 gatherings planned last Wednesday did not come to fruition, as large groups of counter-protesters filled the streets, effectively suppressing any further unrest.
Thank you for reading. If you found this information valuable, please like and share your thoughts in the comments.